I want to try and give you a brief overview of electrical systems for general aviation aircraft. When we look at a system on an aircraft, there are always five things that we're interested in as pilots. What is it? How does it work? How does it fail? How do I know it failed? And what do I do next? We're going to start with what is it? The electrical system of a small general aviation aircraft is typically made up of a battery, which is here, a bus, which are some bars that all of our electrical components are attached to, the starter to turn the engine over when we're trying to start the engine, a charging system, and a master and alternator switch to control the system with. We're going to start with the battery. It's very important that you know what voltage your battery is. Uh, the uh, Cessna 152 is a 24 volt battery. The older Cessna 150s are 12 volt batteries. It's important because sometimes you'll arrive for your flight and your battery will be too weak to turn the engine, in which case you need to call line service and have some external power applied. And if you apply the wrong voltage, you could damage the system or even cause a fire. The battery is connected to the system through a battery contactor. The battery contactor, also known as a solenoid or a relay, is just a very heavy duty remote control switch. Some aircraft are also supplied with a ground service receptacle that makes it easier to jump start the aircraft in the case of a weak battery. The battery master switch you can think of as being a remote control for the battery contactor. When you turn the battery master on, it completes a circuit that turns the battery contactor on, and it in turn allows the big current to flow to the bus. This means that when you turn the battery off, it keeps all of the heavy duty current on the other side of the firewall from you, which is very important in the case of a short circuit where your wires are starting to burn inside the cockpit. You can know that when you turn that battery master off, it limits all of the current to in front of the firewall where it's not going to start burning you or your passengers. The starter is just a big electric motor that turns the engine in order to get it running. It only typically runs for just a few seconds, and it is by far the biggest load that we can put on the battery. It is controlled by a battery contactor that looks very much like uh, a battery contactor. The starter contactor is yet another remotely controlled switch it's a very heavy duty switch up in the engine compartment and it's controlled by the key. When the key is moved to the start position, power is supplied to the starter contactor, which in turn lets the big current through to the starter itself. You turn the engine a few times to get it running and then when you release the key, it turns off and disengages from the engine. While we're talking about the key, we probably ought to talk about the magnetos since they're depicted on your electrical diagram. It's important for you to understand that the magnetos are not hooked to the electrical system in any way. They don't need electricity to run, they produce their own internally. The only reason we hook them up to the key is to turn them off. We ground the magnetos to turn them off. If any of the wires in that system are broken, the magneto will default to the on condition which is why you have to be so careful when you turn the propellers. Once the engine is running, the engine will turn an alternator that provides charging current to the system. Um, there are several main components to the charging system. There's the alternator, which is turned by the engine. It produces electricity enough to run all of your devices plus enough left over to charge the battery. There's an alternator control unit, which is also called a voltage regulator, that regulates how much the alternator puts out so that it's just enough to run everything without producing too much electricity and burning your radios out. There's the switch, 
which we use to turn the system on and off. And there's an ammeter gauge, often associated with a warning light, to let you know whether the system is operating normally or not. When we turn the alternator switch on, it supplies current to the alternator control unit, which in turn supplies current to the field in the alternator. And as long as the alternator is being turned by the engine and has current being supplied to the field, it puts out electricity into the bus. And it puts it out at a higher voltage than the battery. So with a uh, 12 volt battery, the system will be regulated to about 14 volts. With a 24 volt battery, the system will be regulated to about 28 volts. And what that does is it allows the system to push electricity back into the battery and recharge the battery in addition to running all of your devices. The system, the alternator control unit is always sensing system current through this wire right here. And if the system voltage gets too low, it increases output into the field. If it gets too high, it decreases the output into the field. If it gets way too high, um, uh, it will turn itself off and a light will illuminate, um, which indicates that the system has dropped down below that, that uh, 28 volt level that is considered normal. When that light lights up, it can mean one of two things. Some 152s have a, a light that's labeled high voltage and some of them are labeled low voltage. They mean a slightly different thing. Um, a high voltage light means that there's been a spike and the system has turned itself off. A low voltage light can also mean that, but it can also mean that the alternator is simply malfunctioning internally and not putting out enough electricity. In either case, the ammeter will show a discharge if this has happened and your remedy is the same. You need to start troubleshooting the system. So to review what we've talked about, um, the electrical system has, is made up of a battery, a bus, a starter, a charging system, and a master and alternator switch. It works by the battery supplying electricity for startering and operating devices when the engine is not running. The bus is simply a, a big uh, bar that everything is tied to. It distributes power to all of the devices. The starter turns the engine for starting. The charging system, once the engine is running, provides enough power to run all your devices plus charge the battery. And the alternator and master switches are what we as pilots use to control the system. It can fail in three main ways. And there are variations on this, but this is the, the, the gist of it. One way it can, it can uh, fail is the battery is simply too weak to start the engine in the morning. Um, this can be due to disuse. It, it's been a while since the aircraft has been flown, especially on a cold day. Um, it can also be the result of misuse. Um, somebody's left the battery master on overnight, for instance. Um, the second way things can fail is the charging system spikes, turning it, causing itself to turn off uh, automatically. or the alternator can put out a lower than normal voltage due to some internal failures. In either of those cases, our remedy is going to be about the same. We'll get to that in just a second. And then the third and most serious way that the system can fail is you get a short circuit somewhere out in these devices that causes too much current to draw and the wires start melting and you get smoke and even fire in the cockpit. So how do I know these three things have happened? Obviously, the starter is not going to turn the engine enough to get it started if the battery is weak. And in that case, you call maintenance uh, for help with hooking up some ground power to the aircraft. If you do that, you need to make sure you consult your POH and supervise the operation since you as pilot and commander are in charge of that. If the system has tripped because of a voltage spike or a fault inside the alternator, 
you're going to get a high or low voltage light illuminate and above all you're going to find an, an ammeter that's showing a discharge instead of its normal charge. You should consult your checklist before you do anything on this because this is not a time critical thing. You have a minute or two to figure things out. So consult your checklist. Probably what it's going to have you do is cycle the master. And that means simply turning the master off and then back on again. That solves the problem probably eight out of 10 times. If it's not fixed, then you need to prioritize your electrical equipment. And that means turning off all the non-essential stuff and leaving some electricity for things like flaps. Or if you're in a more advanced aircraft, the electrically driven landing gear, things like that. And then discontinue the flight because eventually your battery is going to run dead if you can't fix this. And then finally, our serious one, smoke or fire in the cockpit. You should immediately turn the master off. Once again, the system is designed so that if you turn that master off, there shouldn't be any electricity to cause the fire anymore in the cockpit. Adjust your ventilation as described in your pilot operating handbook, and then find a place to land immediately. That's it. Um, hopefully that you find this helpful, and uh, we'll catch you again on another subject.